of Absalom seems a young man actively supplanting the will of his father at the city gate. Not only did he exacerbate many of the, much of the gossip that was going on in ancient Israel, but he also actively seeked to plant information in the minds of King David's subjects to undermine him. Which reminds me of a recent uh, Reuters post yesterday, which stated that 46 Republicans, along with uh, Republican Senator Tom Cotton, wrote a recent letter to Iranian President Rosan Rouhani stating that the president cannot be trusted in terms of an Iranian nuclear uh, bomb deal, which reminds me of a recent speech given by Benjamin Netanyahu in Congress, which was essentially him preaching to the choir. House Republicans, <laughs> including Indiana Republican Jackie Warlowski, stated, according to Fox News on Tuesday, Woo baby, that was awesome. <laughs> Next the question. What impact will the Republican letter to Iran have on White House negotiations? The answer is threefold. Today, we're going to look towards the fallout of the letter in not only international relations, domestic strife, but also what effect it will actually have on the Iranian deal. <coughs> so first of all, international weakness is something that uh, London and Britain are well acquainted with. In a post-imperial England, they are routinely seen in Parliament not only berating one another, but also it is an area where insults and active sedition often fly rampant. According to The Guardian on Monday, uh, Foreign Secretary Philip Hammond weighed in stating that re the recent letter by Republicans throws a wrench in the Ar Iranian negotiation deal, which is huge coming from an English representative who recently berated members of his own Congress swearing in Parliament. Additionally, Israel is likely behind this letter, which was drafted by Tom Cotton, but was only drafted after Netanyahu's recent speech in Congress. According to the Jerusalem Post today, they echoed the words of Republicans, stating that Iran should think twice before approving a bill with a lame duck president. Now that we've looked towards some of the international implications and the light that the United States is seeing in currently, let's look towards some of the domestic strife that has resulted uh, from this letter sent to the Iranian president. According to CNN Today, the Logan Act of 1789 forbids international interference with, with uh, United States cooperation and negotiations. Additionally, Republicans have long called Obama a lawbreaker. Perhaps this is the ammunition that Democrats need to fire back in terms of what Republicans are doing to actively undermine the work of the United States internationally. Additionally, this likely signals a political war, as according to, political, uh, according to Politico today, Hillary Clinton has fired back, stating that this letter undermines American leadership. Additionally, according to CNN Today, John Kerry has condemned the, the letter of Republicans to Iran stating that he is in utter disbelief. Regardless of the implications of this letter on Tom Cotton's 2016 bid, I don't think so. <laughs> the 2016 bid for Republican president will likely be impacted by a voting base that has been shaken by a weakened foreign policy approach by Republicans. Now that we've looked into some of the domestic implications of this letter, Let's look towards what exactly it will, how it will influence Iranian negotiations. First of all, Hassan Rouhani, the Iranian president, will likely take the advice of Republicans and will likely not trust the president. According to the Huffington Post on the 9th of March this year, Tom Cotton recently retweeted his letter to not only Hassan Rouhani, but also Khamenei, the supreme leader of Iran. This signals that if the Iranian letter has the effect that Tom Cotton wanted, it will likely mean that Iranian leadership questions Obama's leadership in the United States. Additionally, this international approach to uh, law negotiations interjects a political significance which goes far beyond any type of international um, profiteering we've seen in the Republican Party since. Hosan Rouhani recently released a statement stating that the letter was patronizing and an affront to Iranian leadership, which has its own stances on an Iranian uh, nuclear program, as well as the international relations it currently holds with the United States. Additionally, we're going to look into some of the implications 
that this letter will have in terms of not proliferating in Iran. The, uh, uh, in the Indian bid for non-proliferation didn't work out well, as India is now armed with nuclear weapons capabilities, as well as a nuclear power infrastructure. However, according to the Washington Post on the 10th of March this year, Tom Cotton admitted that he wants Iranian missile or Iranian nuclear talks to fail. This would signal that not only is he actually throwing a wrench into Iranian negotiations, but that he wants to see Obama fail and burn. So today, we have looked at the prompt. What impact will the Republican letter to Iran have on White House negotiations? And we have responded that the fallout to this letter will be threefold. Not only have we looked at weakening international relations, a domestic strife that will likely ensue, and finally, towards specifically what it will mean for Iranian negotiations, we can see that the Republican letter did not help Republicans at all, and it certainly did not help the United States foreign policy interests. Just as Republican Party routinely goes above and beyond the president in terms of breaking law and making enemies, so too did the ancient leader Absalom make enemies in King David's court. Now today, we have a unique opportunity to look into some of the negative consequences of a Republican bill that actively is engaged in sedition against the leader. As a country, we too can take a lesson from not only Absalom, but Republicans in Congress, and see that actively uh, opposing your leader might not be good for you in the short term or the long term.